Hello everyone, I'm Carol McNeil. Welcome to the second hour of CBC News Sunday. And I'm Evan Solomon. In Canada, the average Roman Catholic nun is about 74 years old and their declining numbers cast doubt on the future of holy orders. This day and age, when a woman can aspire to virtually any career, why would someone choose a life of poverty and celibacy? But we're about to show you how a convent in Michigan may be turning the tide. It's actually bursting at the seams with young, well-educated women, including a number of Canadians. So we decided to find out why they're answering the call. votes by sending new life. They are running full speed ahead with their eyes wide open, their intellects full of knowledge into the mystery of God. They are big souled, warm hearted, generous, intuitive, sensitive, determined, sacrificial, very intelligent. I'm Sister Joseph Andrew and I'm the Director of Vocations of the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. We cannot build fast enough to keep up with the number of young women who are coming. And yet, if I were to say to the 20 plus that will be entering this next year, I'm sorry, we're out of space, bring a sleeping bag. They say, we love sleeping on the floor. And we're gonna really get to do that? It would not ever be, oh my. I love our monastic life. I love the choral office, the um, silence at meals, and. Uh, the silence that we have in this community, our prayer time. I'm Sister Mary Dominic Marsh from Stratford, Ontario. I don't think anybody wants to live a mediocre life or just to be, and it doesn't mean like you want to be famous or anything, but that you have purpose and you have meaning. And I think when you're, you know, 20 something or whatever, you're really starting to think, okay, career or whatever else the situation may be, where am I supposed to be in life? What's the meaning of all this? What's the purpose of all this? And how am I going to give myself to it? I saw it and I was just so amazed. And so I thought I'd go check it out. And then I, next thing I know, I was checking out the whole Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist webpage and every nook and cranny. And <laughs> I wanted something that was really authentic. I wanted something where the vows really meant something. So there was real poverty. I didn't, if I'm professing the vow of poverty, I really meant like, I don't want to own anything. <laughs> I want God to be my only treasure. Good job. How's this table doing? Is this your pencil, John Paul? I was an engineering student at the University of Toronto before I, um, before I entered. And so teaching was not exactly on my radar screen. So I'm multiplying two times x and then I'm adding three times x. I had no thoughts of it at all and then I was at this reception and a priest I knew came up to me and said, are you married? And I said, well, no. And he said, um, well, there's this great order of Dominican sisters in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You have to look into them. You have to look it up. And I said, oh, um, no, thank you. And <laughs> but it stayed on my mind and on my heart. When you come here, and um, it just kind of clicks, and you just know in your heart that, oh my gosh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life. And it's very, it's very mysterious. <laughs> I really wanted to run for prime minister. Like I wanted, I wanted to, to run for the house and, and then kind of realize that there was more than that. It's that radical witness that we're hungering for 
And you see that all the communities that are really doing well, they, they wear the habit, they're living community life, they're living their poverty, and they love it and they're on fire. But as soon as we began the community, we said we want a website because we, that's the way that you're gonna put yourself into today, almost everyone's home, so to speak. This new website that just went up on December 31st, actually, and since then, we have had 1.4 million hits on our website from around the world, many times. We would not have the numbers of sisters in our community without it. Um, God gives the call in each individual woman's heart, but she has to figure out, what do I do with this? She will run first, usually, to the website. Then she'll eventually, perhaps, get up her nerve to send an email, and then that email will come in to me. I can get 70 to 100 emails a day. I'm looking for my vocation. Help me, sister. I've had it with the loneliness, the emptiness. Others are, sister, let me tell you this. Can you give some advice towards this? Dominican Sisters of Mary, you can just show up. You know um, that Vespers are at 5 o'clock on every Sunday. How old are these girls? Good. Now's the time. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Well, we know what we're going to be encouraging. They're suspecting that their daughters just might have religious vocations. One of them, the oldest girl, is 14 in, in one family, and in another family of this one is nine. And he said, I think that she's really, she says, I'm either going to be a mommy or I'm going to be a sister of Mary, mother of the Eucharist. There's a whole world knocking at the door and I want to answer it. Well, we're dealing with a set, a very limited amount of time. So I can get on the Blackberry when I'm not here and I can answer the immediate ones or take care of as much as I can. Of course, I don't have the same amount of time and, and this can take a little bit longer, but at the same time, I have ready access to whoever needs. As soon as I know I'm going out the door, besides my, my prayer books, this is the next thing that I would grab. If I'm away, I'll, I'll pick it up on this. So this is great. <laughs> if you use it for God, the whole world is at your fingertips. <laughs>《15》。I was seriously considering、um, joining the women's, the Canadian Olympic ho hockey team, and you know I had all the equipment and I'd play every day, and it was something that I really aspired to, and、uh, and I left the ice behind. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sister Mary Judith. I'm from Saskatchewan. I mean, I had a good time、um, trying out all the pleasures of the world before I entered, and none of them did it for me. <laughs> I really wanted to give myself, and I actually went to visit the missionaries of charity in、um, Harlem. And during that time, I got a phone call from home. A close friend of mine had died, and that was kind of a turning point in my life、uh, because I kind of a couple of my friends committed suicide, and、um, and it was kind of like that. You just realize, like, what what is life about? Yeah, I just started really asking questions. What is reality? A lot of people tend to think that、uh, you know, when you enter a convent, you're you're running away from reality, and In my experience,、uh, I've had to embrace a lot more reality than I ever had to on the, in the world. If you think about,、uh, like people,、um, you get in your car, you turn on the radio, you play music, you get home, you turn on the TV. There's constant noise and there's never silence. And I think about the silence of the convent. The scariest thing is you're finally faced with yourself, and not very many people are willing to face themselves. And I think that's one of the great fears of the commitment of the convent. <laughs> This is my third year, and in、um, August I'll be making my vow. Because these principles, are they going to be religious? Are they going to be lay people? That, Do you that, know? That I don't know. You know, I'm a call sister because.、Um, good. Okay, this retreat. Have you heard from Sister yet about the details? That... You know, the thing of it is, I've got about a, a million approaches I could use. If they're going to give their whole life to God, they want the total. Commitment, and so when they come here, they immediately see, I would say, the real thing in regards to the fullness of religious life, as the church has given us the guidelines to live it. I think Pope John Paul II got the ball rolling. He definitely inspired this new generation because he went to see them so many times on his World Youth Days, 
on his travels, I forgot how many times the, the miles would be around the globe, literally. I think John Paul II taught them, go for it. And don't look behind yourself and second guess. Fling your life at God as you believe God is and know the peace for which you were created. so we were just able to send our first sisters out to teach and their paychecks are coming in but it's not going to quite do for 70 people. We're in capital fundraising and is it coming fast enough? Probably no. And that too is pushing us to meet a whole group of people in society that we would never. And, and it's good for me to go in front of this very wealthy man and say, how poor can you help? And he just kind of melts. Well, how much do you need? And then I tell him, and he just kind of leans back in his chair. But then I say, but it's not for me. It's for young women throughout the world that are finding our convent and asking, can they give their lives to God? And they do need a roof over their heads, and they have big appetites. <laughs> Good morning. So you're on your way to classes. I love working with young people. I love helping potential become actuality for the good, for God. A uh, couple of things about that piece. You notice that some of the sisters had male names, and so the sisters are allowed to take names of any saints that inspire them, regardless of the gender. The other thing is the difference between a nun and a sister. A nun is cloistered, more contemplative. A sister is actually out in the world, so the women you just saw are actually sisters and not nuns. And you know what's, what's, what's phenomenal about it? Obviously, you said that the nuns on the Blackberry, and you, you, you see, the, the obviously, the, the capital campaign. The average age of someone in that convent is a 28. Mm -hmm. They come in at 24, and of course in other convents around North America is about 74. So you see at entry, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And so you see this incredible modernization and making it accessible. Maybe it was Pope John Paul II, and that as she talked about the kind of reinvigorating. But uh, it really fascinating to see how young women and, and you know the, that woman, the young. Uh, She's in her third year, mm -hmm. just about to take her vows from Saskatchewan, and she talks about how her life, this was reality, facing the salt. I, that, that really connected. But facing the salt, facing herself, right? Yeah. And I thought she put that so well, and I said that to you. I thought that was a very uh, excellent, an excellent point to make about the reality, the toughest reality anybody ever has to face is facing themselves. Still to come, can Oprah make a bestseller out of anything? We'll debate the self-help phenomenon called The Secret. What a, what a contrast there, The Secret and that, you know, I mean, two ways to help people there. I, this is exactly. going to be an interesting that, juxtaposition. That's a, that's a very good point, as a matter of fact. And also coming up, is the U.S. really gearing up to withdraw troops from Iraq? We'll examine the politics of pulling out. So please stay with us.